Well, hello and welcome to the third installment of Arnold's Home Improvements webinar series. Today we're going to tackle ice dams and what they are and how to present, prevent them. And here from Arnold's Home Improvement is Glenn Smith to take us through our presentation today. Glenn, take it away. Hi, my name is uh, Glenn Smith and uh, um, I work for Arnold's Home Improvement. I am uh, one of the many roofing experts that we have here. Uh, I have personally uh, 27 years uh, roofing experience, uh, so I've seen a little bit of everything um, during those uh, years. Uh, the thing we're talking about today is ice damming. Uh, it is a uh, uh, problem for a lot of roofs because of the design, uh, because of um, different factors of the house that wasn't thought of. Um, as we have gotten more uh, educated with uh, ventilation and insulation, probably in the last 10 years, we've noticed some different ways we're able to uh, reduce the number of ice damming. Uh, ice damming itself is it's, it's a simple process, and it makes really a lot of sense of why it occurs. Uh, to give a simple scenario, what well, we would we would get, say, last night we received five, four inches of snow. Um, then the next day, as the sun is shining, uh, if the roof is not properly venting, or which means that we're getting uh, a good airflow from the soffits to the ridge, what can happen is the upper portion of the roof would be warmer than the soffit area or the lower portion of the roof. When that happens, uh, the ice melts off the roof, and as it's running down the roof, when it hits that cold spot, it forms ice. Then it repeats itself, and, and that's how an ice damming occurs. Um, Within ice damming, that's the only period where you can say water backs up. Water will always run to the lowest point of a roof. However, as it freezes and thaws, freezes and thaws, it creates what we call hypothermal, and it pushes itself under, up underneath the shingles. And that's when, if there's not adequate protection of like an ice, ice guard, uh, then that would actually come inside the house. So that's kind of how it occurs because it's still freezing out and it hits a colder portion of the roof. However, it, it can be resolved. Um, and one of the ways is to have good ventilation. Ventilation is really important uh, in the fact that what it does is it just gives us the whole attic area to be one temperature versus the upper portion being warmer than the lower portion. It gives us good airflow to allow the hot air to escape uh, the roof instead of just melting the roof uh, the, or melting the snow that's on the roof. So if we could have our ideal temperature for the attic area, it would be whatever the ambient temperature outside is. That being said, in order to achieve that, we have to have good insula insulation as well. And so in order to have good insulation R values, we got to make sure that all of the can lighting uh, uh, is nice and sealed. Uh, we're not getting any uh, convection heat as well as just the heat escaping from, from the house. So we do recommend to have uh, at least an R38 to an R60, uh, which is between 13 and 17 inches of insulation. And that will reduce the heat escape to allow the, the snow to melt prematurely off, off of the roof. So by having those two items, good ventilation and good ins insulation, it will reduce probably 90% of the ice dammings that occur. They've got some really good products out there today that allow for uh, ventilation off of the, the roof edges because some homes do not have a soffit 
in order to achieve it. So they're actually getting some uh, ventilation actually from the roof side. Um, and there's different power fans that are available. Uh, and we've gotten to the point where they've got more their solar, so we don't need to get electrical runs uh, to operate those. They're very efficient. Um, and that would, those are, they would be really good for where the ventilation isn't really possible to be, to be just a, a nice airflow, whereas with those, it, you actually get a, a pull of the hot air from, from the corners of the roof. So actually, it's more of a forced um, exhaust. So, and that helps a lot of times when there's less of a ridge than there is a bottom edge of a roof. So, because you want to have equal ventilation where we have good airflow. Um, then the second thing that we want to make sure that we, we certainly do have is that when we are talking about insulation is that 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 there's proper proper baffles that's installed when you know by the bottom airflow so that air can flow up and over the insulation and and that's where we've seen a lot of homes they've done the their due diligence of making sure that they have good insulation but they've they've clogged up the vents to allow the airflow well the problem is is if when we when we don't have a good airflow, it can also cause some uh, different mold and mildew issues because what we're getting is the condensation from the hot, from the heat escaping the attic area into the roof side and it being very cold and it creates condensation which in turn uh, gives us a mold and mildew issue on the underside of the sheeting of the, of the roof. So we, we definitely want to make sure that that we're not clogging up our ventilation. Uh, in the past, ventilation was, we used to give it as an option, but with today's roof systems and the understanding of how much longer it preserves the, the life of the shingles and the plywood and everything else, it's really not, it's not an option any longer. It's just part of a roof system. And, and I think that's where we're getting as an industry a lot smarter uh, in, making a lot of our roofs uh, last longer, they wear better because of uh, the, they're not up there baking because of the underside heat. And the one thing we also, we always talk about when we talk about insulation, we like using the uh, Attic Hat, which is a fiberglass insulation made by Owens Corning. Um, and the reason we like using it versus a cellulose is because it doesn't attract that any uh, that mold because it won't grow on the fiberglass, whereas it would grow on a cellulose. And the beauty of the Atticat is it can just go right over top of any existing insulation, so that we're not you're not having to uh, repay for you know those inches that you've already you already have to achieve a uh, certain R value. So we, that's the reason why we like using the Atticat. It's an effective way of uh, achieving those R values. That's going to be good for insulation. And we always say that insulation is probably the best home improvement that you can you can purchase as a homeowner. Um, and the reason why is because you can typically get your payback of the insulation within about four years because of the monies that you save on your utilities costs. And that's both hot and cold. So it actually, insulation does well for you also in the summer, not just the winter months. Um, because back to the reason we say that it's the best home improvement is, you know, you, you hear that if you put a new kitchen in or a new bathroom, you get, you know, 80 to 100% return on your investment. The problem is you got to sell your home in order to get those monies back, whereas with insulation, you can get those monies back each and every month. And after it's paid for, then it becomes a positive cash flow for you. Um, so that's the reason why we really believe that insulation is, is really underrated in that it doesn't, uh, that a lot of uh, homeowners uh, uh, it's neglected by because it's not something that's seen. 
And, you know, um, the one thing that to, we, when we talk about ice damming is, is when we talk about the removal of. The removal of ice dams is something that is very tricky. Uh, we don't want to, because when you're dealing with something that's it's, it's probably pretty nasty out, it's slick, uh, the one thing you don't want to do is get up there with uh, an axe and start banging on the ice in order to get it removed. For one, it's not safe. Two, uh, you could do damage to your shingles uh, and, and the roof edge, the gutters, and so forth. Um, probably, and, and you certainly take hot water, put up there, is probably, I mean, it's effective, but it's, it's, it's a very slow process, and it's going to just create a huge mess. Uh, probably one of the most effective ways is by using steam. Uh, steam works very well. It's typically a, a process in which you would hire a professional to come out and take care of. Uh, the cost is it's fairly expensive. It can, it's typically ranging anywhere from around $300 an hour, and, and they can pretty much get through about 10 inches an hour. Uh, so. That's certainly one of the best ways uh, when we talk about heat tapes. Uh, heat tapes uh, is not something that we're a big fan of. Uh, and the reason for it is, one, it's extremely expensive to operate uh, because of the electric. And two, it uh, really doesn't provide you know, that big of a benefit for you for the cost. So when we always put new roofs on, we always make sure that what we have, what we have, what we call a ice and water guard that's along the perimeter edge. In Toledo, we actually it is a product that is code for us because of the amount of ice damming that we have. But a lot of times we'll we'll go extra measures when there's a reverse valley. Uh, there's a lot of uh, water that's coming down to a small area uh, that's. And that's typically where you're going to catch up a nice dam and so forth as well. So what we try to do is we try to prevent the water coming in, not not as much as preventing the ice dam when we're when we're doing the rough side, but just make sure that it doesn't get inside the house and do damage to the outside wall. And and that's where that's the reason why the city of Toledo has made that a code because it. If there's damage done to the outside wall, it's typically never seen or or thought of until it's way too late, and it's caused some major damage. Uh, so, the use of ice uh, ice and water guard when the roof is the the initial roof is put on does help tremendously a lot keeping that air or the decking dry in the inside of the home, because what it does is it's a rubberized membrane that when the shingles are put on, it actually seals the nail shanks. So we want to make sure that we do have the proper ice and water shield when you're in an environment that, that has uh, a lot of ice damage that occurs in that area. Uh, we want to make sure that all the gaps and the holes are sealed that's inside the attic. And that, that would be like wherever we have a plumbing coming through, a recessed lighting, uh, it would be sometimes you may have an AC unit that's up in the attic area. We want to make sure that that's all not producing heat so that we don't have a conduction of heat as well that's coming through even though we're not having a heat loss. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's not an easy thing to do in order to keep that balance of what the ambient temperature is outside to the ambient temperature that's in your attic. Because if we're able to achieve that, well, what we're saying is we're not heating or cooling our uh, attic space. And by not doing that, and we have nice, even flow, it's going to be impossible for ice damming to occur on your home. So in, in, order, in order to kind of wrap it up, basically um, the defense system for uh, ice damming is, one, uh, good ventilation. Two, to make sure we have proper uh, insulation values. Uh, three, make sure that all the gas holes and so forth that's, that's coming through your ceilings is nice and sealed. And, and that would actually eliminate any possibility of ice damming. Uh, 
what we do want to uh, 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 make sure that we do have is that there are areas that that needs to be ice and water guarded on the roof so that if ice damage does occur, it's not coming inside the home. So I think that's pretty much a, it's a good start for a lot of people on uh, how ice dams occur, why they occur, and some prevention. We always believe that, you know, a, uh, a, an ounce of prevention will certainly take care of a pound of, uh, of problems for us. So um, thank you again for uh, listening to our third installment. And uh, hopefully this is, can give you some information and be helpful to you in your any ice damming problems. Thank you.